heaven's resistance against us. Think about it. When we have pride, there is a, uh, a stop sign on the road to heaven. No further when pride is in our heart. Heaven shuts up and seems as brass and impenetrable. D.L. Moody said this, Be humble or you'll stumble. Be humble or you will in fact stumble. Recently, I was thinking about how I felt when someone would say something uh, bad about me when I'm not present. Anybody ever had that happen? And I, I began to survey how I respond and how I react when I know that someone has said something behind my back that was less than uplifting. I get a little bit defensive. In fact, I don't know about you, but I automatically, I don't even have to try, I automatically begin to call up in my mind all of the shortcomings and the errors of the one that spoke ill of me. What am I doing in that moment? Either verbally by someone else or even in my own heart, when I began to recall all of their faults, all I am doing is I'm trying to push self up above that other person. So I found a quote that I'm going to probably adopt and memorize for myself as, as a way to remind me of a correct response to help me in these moments. If anyone tells you that a person speaks ill of you, don't make excuses about what is said of you, but answer, he was ignorant of my other faults else he would not have mentioned that single one. I'm making this my motto when somebody speaks bad about me. Is that all you see? Because I know me better than any one of you. And I understand that while it's natural for me to try to preserve self, and to get self-elevated above everything and everyone else. That the kingdom lever says uh, that if you will stop elevating yourself and defending yourself, and you will say, there's a lot more wrong with me than you even realize, then heaven shifts gears and begins to work on my behalf. And I don't know about you, but here lately, I've been needing a little bit of more help from heaven. I've turned to self in time of need and self lets me down. I've turned to others in times of need and others, although good intention, have let me down. And so I consciously and I methodically today turn our attention to one who will never let us down. Talking about kingdom levers today. Be humble or you're going to stumble. If lifting actually lowers us, if we lift self, it actually lowers us. Well, then the opposite is true. If we can ever learn how to lower ourselves, then the Bible says it's like standing on a teeter-totter. We get a little closer to heaven. it any wonder that John the Baptist said what he said when he said I must decrease but he must increase 
John understood a kingdom lever that said the lower I go, the closer I get to him. And John said, I want to get as close to the Lord Jesus as I possibly can. When we lower self, we increase heaven's grace toward us. Because God dwells with the contrite and the humble spirit. He lives to revive the spirit of the humble. He lives and exists to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Jesus tried to share this kingdom lever with us in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 3, in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they are actually in the kingdom of God. Oftentimes we mistake some kingdom levers. We, we associate some things and we place them in the category of kingdom non-negotiables. We call them kingdom levers, but they're actually misplaced. They're out of place. They, they probably don't belong in this setting. I want to read to you Luke chapter 18. Verse 9, he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Jesus shares a parable with people that trusted in self. That they were righteous. Verse 10 says, two men went up into the temple to pray. Two men going to the same place for the same purpose. One was a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. After the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto him, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. And here's the kingdom lever again. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be Exalted. Here's the mistaken kingdom levers going to church, praying, fasting, giving. All of these, the one had 
had completed successfully, checked that box, but he was missing the one thing that mattered most. You can go to church every time the doors are open and let me underscore this, you should. We get enough garbage every day, week in and week out, that we do need to put ourselves in the position to receive from heaven's gates as often as we possibly can. But simply coming to church on a weekly basis does not ensure that we are any closer to Jesus than when we are outside of the world. Because we've mistaken and we have labeled going to church as a kingdom lever instead of a place where we can come humble and contrite before God. You imagine offering all of these spiritual sacrifices, but it not amounting to anything because of one thing. How about praying? How many of you could do better in your prayer life? Let me tell you, we need to be trying to carve out time from our entertainment, carve out time from our jobs, carve out time from the the pace of life and seek the face of God but like this Pharisee if you trust in your prayer as that which makes the difference then we'll walk away from our prayer closet just as empty and just as far from God and that's why people can pray and they can be repetitious in their prayer, but the heavens are shut up like brass because when we exalt ourselves, we will be brought down. But if we can in our prayer ever learn how to be broken and to be humble when we stand before our Master, all of heaven will open unto us and the angels of the Lord will encamp round about them that fear fasting is good and we do well to practice fasting a lot of the problems that we have in our Christian walk with God is because we don't know how to say no to the flesh And all we do is we feed the flesh and feed the flesh and feed the flesh and feed the flesh. And we can't understand why the Spirit is so weak in us. We got time to watch all kinds of shows. We got time to watch and read all kinds of materials. But we are are bankrupt and we are empty when it comes to seeking the face of God, reading the things of God, coming to church. Anything and everything gets put in front of God and we wonder why we are weak. I can tell you something, you can practice fasting until your belly button falls off, someone said. But if you do it and you elevate yourself in the process, your fasting just made you hungry and had no spiritual impact in your world. You can walk away from an incredible church service and walk away condemned in your own heart and without power. I underscore again the kingdom lever. When you exalt yourself, it removes any heaven benefit. But when you will remove self, it adds buckets and barrels of kingdom benefit to your life. How about giving? I say it often. I say it often to this congregation because I believe that if you're not careful, you'll fund everything else but the kingdom of God. You'll make room for everything else, but the most important thing in this world is the work of God's kingdom. Funny, we'll offer Hollywood $50 without even thinking, but we'll we'll offer God 50 cents and groan about it. God's people should be delighted 
because we know where our treasure is. That's where our heart is also. That being said, you can give tithe plus 30% offering. But when you do that, if you're exalting self, every dime, every dime, not one dime, makes it into heaven's account. It is disqualified. Because when we exalt self, heaven shuts up his breath. And every spiritual discipline becomes null and void. But if we can ever learn how to do absolutely everything that we do in the kingdom with a broken and a humble heart, heaven opens up its gates for us. And there is an abundance of grace Abram Lincoln said this, I have been driven many times upon my knees by overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. Oh, that I could live with that in my heart, whether I'm lifting my hands, whether I'm praying, whether I'm giving, whether I'm fasting, whether I'm encouraging other people, I need the Lord, and I cannot survive without Him. A young man who had been invited to a dinner given by the South African statesman John Cecil Rhodes arrived by train and had to go directly to Rhodes' house in his travel-stained clothes. To the young guest's horror, he found a room full of people in full evening dress. Soon Rhodes appeared, but strangely enough, Rhodes was wearing an old suit, the host. He had heard of the young man's problem and wanted to spare him further embarrassment. So Rhodes literally clothed himself with humility. First Peter 5, 5 and 6 Peter says this, Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. You can put on true humility. It can hang in your closet next to all of the other stuff that you put on. The problem is often humility is one of the last things we want to wear. But it is the only thing that opens the windows God resists the proud, Peter says in verse 5 and 6. And he giveth grace to the humble. If that's true, then, then Peter just lets his pen continue to go. What's the answer then, Peter? Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Put on humility. He will exalt you in due time. Reminded of two figures in the word of the Lord today. Why 
Is Christ seated where He's seated right now? The Bible says in verse 7, He made Himself of no reputation and took upon Him the form of a servant. He was made in likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Christ, God incarnate, didn't wear king robes, but He put on the cloak of humility every day of His life. At the end of His life, He put on the greatest cloak of humility. He died on the cross. The greatest expression of a God of all eternity is surrendering His only life into the hands of those who should be in His place. When He stretched His hands out, He wasn't filled with self-exaltation. He was filled with compassion. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. He humbled Himself to a point that no other man, woman, boy, and girl will ever be able to humble themselves to. He was sinless. He was spotless. He was guiltless. He was without error. He was without... You couldn't point a finger at Him. You couldn't convict Him. And yet He died in your place. The Bible says, Wherefore... Because he humbled himself to a never before measure. God also hath highly exalted him to a never before measure. The law of the kingdom lever of humility is you can only go as high in God's kingdom as you're willing to go low in man's kingdom. That's why Jesus said, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Not just position, but in the heart. In the heart. The second personality find in scripture as I close the apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 9 he writes I am the least of the apostles an honored place but he puts himself at the bottom of the apostles in Ephesians 3 8 he says I'm the very least of all saints and then in 1 Timothy 1.15, already alluded to one of his last writings, he said, I am the foremost of sinners. I want you to note today that when he wrote, I am the least of the apostles, it was in 59 A.D. A little bit more time walking with God and, and understanding kingdom principles and levers, he then wrote, I am the very least of all saints. He wrote that in 60. A.D. Four years later, his view of who he really was, self had been demoted. Not in his ability, not in his call, but understanding that self must be obeyed. And finally, in 64 A.D., one year later, he writes, I am the foremost of sinners. You understand, the longer you walk with God, and if you're getting closer to Him, self kind of begins to disappear. And He begins to become greater. Not that there's not self, 
but that self isn't even in the picture. That all you see is the nail-scarred hands of an open-armed Jesus and the gift of life that He gives to all freely. It was a man who died exceeding, exceedingly painfully of cancer. But between fearful bouts of agony, of the dreaded disease in which he had to stuff his mouth with bedclothes to avoid biting his tongue off. In between these bouts of unbearable pain, he was heard to have said aloud over and over and over again, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Ah! I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. What we can't see with the naked eye is what was truly happening in the heart and the soul of that man. That when life had pressed upon him unbearable and he was tempted to focus on himself, he would fight that urge and he would humble himself and a praise would begin to rise out of him. Life had brought him to one of the lowest places. But humility was elevating him to one of the highest places. While his flesh was getting weaker and weaker, I wish you could see that his soul was tiptoeing and touching heaven's gate. I will bless the Lord. See, praise from a humble heart is a God magnet. Anybody can praise. Anybody can go through the motion. But when you couple praise with humility, God dwells in the midst of the praises of His people. This is why God moves when you walk into the house of the Lord and you are weak and you are weary and you are frustrated and you are depressed and you are hurting but somehow in all of it you get your hand halfway up and maybe that's the best you can do but you say, God, I will praise you. It's all I can do, Lord. It's all I can do, but it's everything I have. And you see that humble soul lifting his hands, and God says, oh, I'm there. And you feel the presence of God step into a room. Why? Because it's a kingdom lever. You cannot have humble praise and God not show This is why pity won't put you in God's presence. Because pity is just self moaning, self with the microphone. But if you can ever put on humility and humble yourself so that you fade and Christ is taken center stage. 
there's a miracle waiting for you. Heaven and the brass fades. And the lid that you bump your head against during the week disappears and you find yourself in the throne room of God at His feet. Let's stand. This morning I call upon those who want God to come close to them. If you can't feel God this morning, I've come with the kingdom lever. Get a little lower. If you've been struggling to find God, I don't have a magic potion for you. I won't wave a magic wand over you. And there's no oil in this house that'll be magic for you. But I do offer this basic advice. If grace is out of reach, get a little lower. If it feels like you're miles away, don't save self. Lose self. And if you can ever cut that cord, it doesn't take very long. It, it can happen in a moment. It can happen right now when you realize, I've been focusing on me, but I need Jesus. If you can ever come to that place here and here, it, it will open heaven's gates. Is there anybody here this morning that wants to cut Self that wants to push self just a little bit lower because I need to reach grace today. Is there anybody this morning that says I need a little bit less of me and a little bit more of Jesus? I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what your reasoning is. There's a spiritual lever in God's kingdom that is inviting you today. If you'll exalt me, I'll take care of you. Come on, it's time for someone to get self on the back burner and to put Christ on the throne again. Come on, come on, come on, less of me and more of you, Jesus. I humble myself and I exalt you, Lord. At Bethel Christian, we lift our hands, we, we clap our hands, we open our mouths and we talk to God. These are personal ways that you can elevate Him in your life. I invite you today to leave your problems right where they're at and begin to elevate Jesus. Come on, with your mouth and with your heart, elevate Him. You live to revive the humble in spirit. You live to give life and revival to the humble heart. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my the earth rejoices it's you oh hallelujah oh it's you we glorify it's you we glorify
Yeah. 